A runny nose, also known as rhinorrhea, means an excessive production and drainage of mucus from the nasal cavity. The most common cause of rhinorrhea is the common cold and flu, accounting for approximately 40% of cases. The second most common cause is allergy, which is responsible for around 25% of cases, especially allergic rhinitis. The third most common cause is sinusitis, accounting for about 15% of cases. Let's discuss how to differentiate rhinorrhea caused by the common cold from that caused by allergies. Allergic rhinorrhea develops immediately after exposure to an allergen. In contrast, rhinorrhea from a cold develops gradually, usually over a day or two. Allergic rhinorrhea can last for several weeks or even months, sometimes throughout the entire year due to pollen seasons or perennial allergies, such as those to indoor allergens like dust mites. The discharge in allergic rhinorrhea is usually clear and watery, while rhinorrhea from a cold may start as a clear, watery discharge but often becomes thicker and more opaque or yellowish. The associated symptoms also differ. In the case of allergies, symptoms include repeated sneezing, itchy and watery eyes, dark circles under the eyes, allergic shiners, and nasal congestion. In the case of a cold, symptoms include body aches, fever, sore throat, and a general sense of malaise. The mechanism of viral infection caused rhinorrhea is that when a virus invades the nasal lining, it triggers the immune system to attack the invaders. This increases blood flow and causes the nasal lining to dilate, making the area red and swollen. Increased vascular permeability causes fluid to leak onto the nasal lining. This combines with nasal mucus production, the idea is that the body tries to trap and flush out the viruses. The most common pathogen of the common cold causing watery rhinorrhea is the rhinovirus. The flu virus more commonly causes a thicker nasal discharge. Rhinorrhea sometimes affects one side of the nose, but more commonly affects both nostrils. Treatment, especially with decongestants, is effective. Oral decongestants like pseudoephedrine and nasal sprays like oxymetazoline are effective, but they should only be used for a few days due to potential side effects, such as a rebound effect. The mechanism of oral decongestants involves the constriction of blood vessels in the nose. Oral decongestants can have side effects like rapid heart rate, nervousness, and insomnia. Nasal sprays like oxymetazoline have fewer side effects but can also cause a rebound effect, meaning that congestion and rhinorrhea can worsen if used for many days. The effectiveness of these treatments may last up to 12 hours. Decongestants shouldn't be used for more than three consecutive days to avoid the rebound effect. Saline nasal sprays are also used, they can lubricate and thin mucus, flushing irritants from the nasal passages. For acute, severe rhinorrhea, they are less effective, but they can be used for the long term. However, they don't offer immediate relief like decongestants. Antihistamines, while more commonly used for allergic rhinorrhea, can also help with a runny nose due to a cold. Some antihistamines, especially older, first-generation ones like diphenhydramine, can be moderately effective in relieving some symptoms of a runny nose caused by a cold. However, their effectiveness is generally weaker and less consistent compared to decongestants or saline nasal sprays for rhinorrhea. They work best in cases with less inflammation and more histamine involvement. The more histamine is involved, the more watery the rhinorrhea. Second-generation antihistamines, such as cetirizine, Zyrtec, Loratadine, Claritin, and Fexofenadine, Allegra, are also effective in managing symptoms of allergies, including runny noses.